الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم نعلمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وفقها في الدين يا رب العالمين اللهم افتح علينا بحكمتك وانشر علينا برحمتك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله سبحانه وتعالى السيد وكذلك مكننا ليوسف في الأرض يتبوأ منها حيث, نش... حيث يشاء نصيب برحمتنا من نشاء ولا نضيع أجر المحسنين Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, And so we gave full authority to Yusuf in the land. Yusuf became a powerful man in Egypt. Yusuf alayhi salam became uh, the actual ruler and the governor, the, 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 the one that has the power in the land, the strong land, the wealthy land of Egypt. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, we gave him full authority in the land to take position there is there 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 in when and where he likes we bestowed our mercy on whom we on, on whom we will allah bestows the mercy on whom he will allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we will make not to be lost in reward of the good doers wala nudhi'u ajra al-muhsinin but then even better than that be, Yusuf alayhi salam became powerful, became wealthy, became someone who has authority in the land of Egypt. But Allah gave him a better promise. Allah said, "Wa ajru al-akhirati khayrun lil-ladina amanu wa kanu yattaqun." Indeed, the reward of the hereafter is better for those who believe and used to fear Allah and have taqwa and keep their duty to Allah subhanahu wa taala. But like we said in the last session. Allah wants to complete and perfect His bounty not only on Yusuf, which has already happened in that part of the of this story, of this story but also on the family of Yaqub, on Yaqub himself, alayhi salam, who's still suffering from being departed, from being parted with his beloved son Yusuf, alayhi salam, and also to uh, Allah would give the repentance for the brothers of Yusuf. And yet we have still the, the vision of Yusuf, the dream that started the whole story has not been realized yet, have not been fulfilled yet. So in the last session we saw how the brethren of Yusuf came on to him and they came to the land of Egypt. He could recognize them, but they could not recognize their brothers, their little brothers that they threw in the depth of the well many, many years back. And like we said, many scholars put that between 20 and 40 years, and some even said many years, actually more than that. Hassan al-Basri said that the story took about 80 years from beginning to end. So there's really a vast range of, of uh, where the scholars put the uh, time of the story, the duration of the story, but the majority said at least, at least uh, his father was depart de departed from him for at least more than 20 years based on just the sequence of the events. So they came to him, and Yusuf alayhi salam gave them the loads of the, uh, the provision that, that they came for, for each family, for each one gave him a camel's load of grain, because that's what Yusuf alayhi salam did. Every representative of each family has to be present, so there would be no monopoly, there would be no abuse of taking the, the provisions from Egypt in a time of famine and a time of absolute need in the land. And they loaded an, the, the 11th camel for their absent brother, but Yusuf made a condition for them that they should bring that 11 brothers, brother with them when they come back on the next trip. Otherwise, they cannot get any provision. They cannot get any food from Egypt at all. Uh, they would be liars, and, and, and he would not consider giving them anything. And to make sure that they will come back with his brother Benjamin, or Benjamin, he put the price they paid for that provision back in their luggage, put it back with the provision that he gave them. So when they went and met their father, Yaqub alayhi salam, they knew that it would be a problem for Yaqub alayhi salam to give them Benjamin to take like they did uh, like they took Yusuf before and they could not keep Yusuf, they could not protect Yusuf. Uh, so they knew there would be a problem with Yaqub alayhi salam. And that's one day when Yusuf asked them to, to bring him back, they said, Sanurawidu anhu aba, we will try our best. We will, we will 
we will try to get his father to do this. So they knew it would be a difficult mission. And yet Yaqub would not give them uh, Ben Yamin, and he said, uh, he said to them, would I trust you with him like I trusted you with his brother before, with Yusuf? And I will not, I don't need your protection. Allah is the best protector. Allahu khayrun hafizah. Wa huwa arhamur rahimeen. I'm not seeking your protection. Allah indeed is the best protector, and he is the most merciful of those who have mercy. However, they had an argument with their dad. I mean, you know, they, they had presented an argument to their dad. That, ya abana, ma what else do we want? Hadihi bida'atuna ruddat ilayna. Here is the money that we paid, it's back to, in our position. So we're dealing with a generous person. We're not deal, we're dealing with an honorable person, the Aziz of Masr, lest they knew that that was their brother Yusuf alayhi salam. وَنَمِيرُ أَهْلَنَا Our family needs food and we need to bring him that provision. It's a necessity that we should take our brother with us. وَنَحْفَظُ أَخَانَا We will protect our brother. وَنَزْدَادُ كَيْلَ بَعِيرًا We will also bring another load of, of food with us because our brother is now with us. ذَلِكَ كَيْلٌ يَسِيرٌ Indeed, it is an easy thing to do. It is really, like we say in today's language, it's a no-brainer that we should do that. So. Yaqub got convinced that that is a necessity and they, they will have to do this if they need to bring any food for their family. And he allowed, he allowed Benjamin to go with them on one condition. He said, you have to give me a very uh, strong vow with Allah that will protect you, Benjamin, and you'll bring him with me, with you, unless it would be impossible for you to do that. And then he recommended for them that they, when they enter Egypt, they enter from different gates, different gates. And he said, وَمَا أُغْنِي عَنْكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ مِنْ شَيْءٍ Allah, this will not prevent anything that Allah has already ordained for you. And the, like we said in the last session, and this is just a quick recap, that there were two, two reasons why the scholar said that Yaqub asked his, bro, his children not to enter from one gate, not to enter as a group to Egypt, but enter separately. Uh, one of them is being cautious, so they would not, people would not fear them because they're 11 men coming into a foreign town and people may think that they're coming into a rich town in a time of famine and they may uh, cause harm and they may steal that provision because people that come in need and they're strong and they may be, may be a bandit of, uh, you know, like a gang other than people that really want peace and they will just come to take the provision. The other cause, the other reason that the scholars brought up is hasad, is envy. Eleven strong men that all belong to the same family, that is a cause for envy. And many scholars said, Allah explained this eventually. Whatever the reason is, it was just a matter, it's an affair in the heart of Yaqub. It's an urge that he had and he had fulfilled it. وَمَا كَانَ Allah, Allah, he said, Yaqub, he said, وَمَا أُغْنِي عَنْكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ مِنْ شَيْءٍ And this would not have prevented anything that would happen to his children. And Allah said, he knows that. Yaqub, وَإِنَّهُ لَذُوا عِلْمٍ لِمَا عَلَّمْنَا Yaqub was not a superstitious person. He didn't do this out of superstition like people do. He, he, he was a knowledgeable person. He knew that the, uh, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed will happen. So now we are with Yusuf alayhi salam back in his court, back in his place, and his brothers are coming back to the second, for the second time and entering the court of Yusuf. And Yusuf is on his throne, and here now they're proving to him that there's actually 11th of them, and what they told him the first time was not a lie, and he, they brought Benjamin, they brought Benjamin to his presence. So now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes to us the meeting between the two beloved brothers. وَلَمَّا دَخَلُوا عَلَى يُوسُفَ آوَى إِلَيْهِ أَخَاهِ And when they entered upon Yusuf, آوَى إِلَيْهِ أَخَاهِ Allah described that verse of آوَى. آوَى, مَأْوَى is a place of protection. It's the place that you have the most comfort in, the place that you feel safe in. And when Yusuf, آوَى إِلَيْهِ أَخَاهِ It just has all the love. It has all the longing. All the, you know, how much he missed his brother. All of that is really in one word. And it's just the beauty of the Quran. Really, one word explains a lot. It seems just really a range of emotions that two brothers, you have to 
just put yourself in there. They're so close together. He loved his little brother. And now he, can, he sees his brother after at least, we said, 20 to 40 years of de being departed from, being parted from each other. فَآوَى إِلَيْهِ أَحَا He hugged, like you see, he hugged him. He brought him close. But that did not happen in front of the other 10. Because that was in a separate, in a private meeting. How do we know? From the verse itself. أَوَى إِلَيْهِ أَحَا قَالَ إِنِّي أَنَا أَخُوك I am indeed your brother. And many scholars said that Yusuf alayhi salam spoke two languages. Obviously, for really, and this is very plausible explanation. He spoke Hebrew, the language of Yaqub alayhi salam, very fluently, that's how he was raised. But he also spoke the Egyptian language very fluently. And when his brothers were in his presence, he would speak the Egyptian language through an interpreter to them. And they could not tell that that was any, any that a person that even knew Hebrew remotely. But when, when he would face his brother in privately, he would be, he, that's how he would present himself to his brother. So he said, إِنِّي أَنَا I am indeed your brother. فَلَا تَبْتَئِسْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ So grieve not for what they used to do. So that tells us that they used to abuse Benjamin as, Benjamin as well. They not only treated Yusuf alayhi salam very harshly, they also treated his brother very harshly. And the envy they had in their heart for Yusuf, they also had it for Benjamin as well. But the only difference that Yusuf were really more beloved to his father than anybody else. So Yusuf deserved more hatred from them than anybody else. So we know that from the beginning of the surah. لا يوسف وأخوه أحب إلى أبينا منا. Yusuf and his brother, not Yusuf and our brother. It's like they don't, they, 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 these people belong to a completely different family. They were just separating themselves from Yusuf and from Benjamin. But now Yusuf is bringing his brother back to the beloved nature of Yusuf alayhi salam. He said, Inni ana akhuk. I am indeed your brother. فَلَا تَبْتَئِسْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ Do not grieve, do not, do not have sadness for what they have done for you. It's over. He's telling his brother, I will put an end to your suffering. And this is how it's going to happen. And we'll see how Allah plotted for Yusuf so he can put an end to the abuse of his brothers and to put an end to the suffering of his brother Benjamin alayhi salam. So he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَلَمَّا جَهَزَهُمْ بِجَهَازِهِمْ جَعَلَ السِّقَايَةَ فِي رَحْلِ أَخِي So when he had furnished them forth with their provisions, he put the golden bowl or the golden measure in his brother's bag or in his brother's saddle. And then, as the caravan was about to depart from the land of Egypt, as they were about to leave the land of Egypt, The caravan was stunned by an announcement. And that announcement is someone, a crier cried, someone, Mu'adhin, Mu'adhin is an announcer. You know, when you go to the Adhan, it's an announcement. Mu'adhin Mu'adhin Ayyatuha Al-Ir. O oh, you caravan, innakum lasarikun. You are indeed are thieves. You are thieves. So they, they knew that they didn't do anything wrong. They would not steal. They're the children of the prophets. They could not do any, you know, something like that. Qalu wa aqbalu alayhim. They said and they turned towards them. They turned back to the town. So, and that tells you the, the condition they were in. Like again, the, the, the storytelling in the Quran is amazing. There is nothing that there is nothing that you can replace. There's nothing that you can substitute. And every word tells something. Usually, if there if a thief, if you call upon somebody who stole something, they would run away. They would really just walk faster from the place if they're guilty. But they, when they were called that, come on, you are thieves. They came back immediately because they're innocent. It's like what what. What is going on? They wanted to come. He said, وَأَقْبَلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ قَالُوا مَاذَا تَفْقِدُونَ What are you missing? What, what, what are you accusing us of? قَالُوا نَفْقِدُوا, نفقدوا صُوَاعَ الْمَلِكِ They said, we have lost the golden ball, all the golden measure. It's a measuring tool. And, and they said, it is a, a very uh, expensive, a very precious uh, measure. Like, a play, like that's how they used to... Uh, the, uh, measure how much provision they're given out. And it was a standard thing because Yusuf wanted to make sure he treats everybody the same. 
So he would use that same way, the same standard thing. And because every caravan saw that expensive measure, it was a good target. It made sense that a caravan from out of town would steal that particular measure because it is uh, very expensive and everybody can see it because that's how they get their provision. It's being measured for them. So, وَأَقْبَلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ قَالُوا مَاذَا تَفْقِدُونَ قَالُوا نَفْقِدُوا صُوَاعَ الْمَلِكِ we are missing the measure of the, the measure ball of the king. And for him who produces it, bihi, there is a reward. There is a reward for those who bring that back. A camel load of provision, an extra camel load, which is a lot given the famine that the land was living at that time. And I guarantee that. And I will be bound by it. So this announcer came and he said there's a guaranteed reward. Like, you know, when people miss something or lose something, they put a reward, you know, $500 for those who bring my cat or whatever, you know, things like that. They said, you know, that there is a reward. We are missing this. When, you know, if, you're, if you haven't stolen that, it may, maybe you have it by mistake. Whoever finds it, whoever brings it in, then there is a reward for it. Now, we see what happened with the, with the story. Yusuf alayhi salam is planning to teach his brothers lessons, to bring him back to repentance, to bring him back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he doesn't want his brother to suffer through the process. So that's why you see why Yusuf alayhi salam did not wait till the end to tell his brother that I am Yusuf. He did it in the very beginning. Because imagine this situation happening and Bin Yamin doesn't know what's going on and he is going to be accused of stealing that expensive measure of the king. He would absolutely panic. He would absolutely feel miserable, you know, being wrong. But Yusuf alayhi salam has already given him a, a safety, you know, measure here. He said, you know, don't worry about it. What will happen will not hurt you. So the brothers of Yusuf started defending themselves and defending their honor. They said, we have not done anything. Wallahi, you know that we did not come to spread corruption on earth. And we are not thieves. So then now said, the, the, the people of Yusuf said, based on the instructions of Yusuf alayhi salam, قَالُوا فَمَا جَزَاؤُهُ إِن كُنْتُمْ كَاذِبِينَ so what would be the punishment if you're not telling the truth? If we find what we, are, what we are missing with you, what would be the penalty? You decide. So they gave the choice for the brothers of Yusuf to give their ruling based on the sharia of Yaqub alayhi salam. And there is a reason for that. So they said, what is the penalty if you were liars? They said the penalty, the punishment for the penalty should be that he in whose back it is found should be held for the punishment of the crime. Meaning that person will become a slave. That person is the penalty himself. His freedom would be lost. And he would be given for that thing that he stole from you. And that was the sharia of Ya'qub. That was the law of Ya'qub, the religion of Ya'qub alayhi salam. كَذَلِكَ نَجْزِ الظَّالِمِينَ This is how we punish wrongdoers. This is how we punish al-zalimun. So now Yusuf came to the scene. Now you see Yusuf alayhi salam entering the scene to complete the plot. Now Yusuf did not accuse anyone with anything personally. You know, he said, what if I find it there? They said, whomever you found, who found the, the measure in their sack in their bag, then you can take that person. And he knew where that, where, that, where that measure is going to be, where that ball is going to be. So he started, you see this beautiful drama, he started searching their sacks and their bags before he's, he end up with the uh, bag of Benjamin. Benjamin. Then said, so he, Joseph, he, Yusuf, began the search with their bags before the bag of his brother. Just to really for the surprise to be absolutely 
to be stunning for them. They would not expect that. They, they knew that, that this would not happen. Then he brought it out of his brother's back. And Allah said, كَذَلِكَ كِدْنَا Yusuf. So we, Allah, planned for Yusuf. What is the, the, the perfect plot? Is he wants to have his brother. And the laws of Egypt, based on theft, would not allow Yusuf to take his brother. But Yusuf made them choose their own laws to be punished with. Right? So that way he could take his brother. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala plotted it that way. Allah said, مَا كَانَ لِيَأْخُذَ أَخَاهُ فِي دِينِ الْمَلِكِ He would not have, been, have taken his brother by the law of the king. He could not have taken his brother. إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ اللَّهِ Except that Allah willed it. نَرْفَعُ دَرَجَاتٍ مِنَ النَّشَاءَ Allah wanted to really perfect that for Yusuf. Allah wanted to even elevate the station of Yusuf and his brother higher and higher. And, slay and save Benjamin from the torment and the miserable life that he was living amongst his brother and also to vindicate Yusuf alayhi salam as we will see later on and more so for their brothers the brothers of Yusuf to learn the lesson to come back to the, to the with repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala نَرْفَعُ دَرَجَاتٍ مَنْ نَشَاءُ وَفَوْقَ كُلِّ ذِي عِلْمٍ عَلِيمٍ and over all those endowed endowed with knowledge there is the all knowing there is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a perfect plan another important thing that we can reflect on in this verse is you see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said ma kana liya'khudha akhahu fi deen al-malik he would not have been have taken his brother in the deen of al-malik so punishment laws all of that is part of what it's part of deen it's part of our religion so we cannot really separate the dealings that we deal with laws and, and other things like that from the religion that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted. So the sharia of the king, the, the laws of the king, the jurisprudence of that king is actually the religion of that king. And Muslims should understand that the laws are, should be based on the sharia in, the, in, a, in a state of Islam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala considered all of that a deen. The word deen is an all-encompassing word. It's a word that doesn't only mean worship. It doesn't only mean the uh, rituals of the religion. It means the way of life for the, for the Muslims. And that is the deen as defined and as is, uh, the way it is used by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran. So now the brothers, put, you put yourself back into the scene. The brothers are completely stunned. They see this. Thing coming out of the brother's bag and what do they do? What do they do? What should they say? So here's what they said. They said, They said, well, if he steals, there was a brother of his who did steal before him. Who do they mean? Yusuf. They fell into two or, or more Mistake in that one sentence. يسرق فقد سرق أخ له من قبل. The first thing they said, the first thing they did is they they committed the sin of suuzan, of thinking ill of their brother. Now about themselves, when they were talking, they're coming back. Remember what they said. لقد علمتم ما جئنا لنفسد في الأرض. We would not spread corruption on earth. وما كنا سارقين. And we are not thieves. But when, when it was found in their brother's back, they did, not, they did not say it is a mistake. Something wrong happened. You know, they did not defend their brother in any way. They immediately assumed completely that their brother is a thief. And they know that Benjamin has never stolen anything before. You know, they, they should practice husnudhan, good thoughts of one another. When you hear an allegation against a believer, so what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah An-Nur, right? You should always think the best of, of the accused. You know, that concept of, of all are innocent until proven guilty, it is in the Quran. You should, when you hear allegation, you should not assume the worst of your believing brothers and sisters. You should always think the best. What did they say? Oh yeah, he's a thief. Not only he's a thief, 
his brother, meaning the brother of Yusuf, the Yusuf, the brother of, you know, the one from his father and mother, is also a thief. فَقَدْ سَرَقَ أَخُ اللَّهُ مِنْ قَبْلِ So they committed the first sin, which was su'udhan, ill thoughts of another, of their brother. The second sin was either ghiba, backbiting of Yusuf, who cannot defend himself, who, can, who was not, you know, who was, he was present, but they did not know he was present, because they were telling that to Yusuf himself, not knowing that was Yusuf. But the, the ulama said, this phrase can, can be interpreted in different ways. Number one, Yusuf is not a thief. It's a given. Yusuf, the prophet of Allah, the noble, the son of the noble, the son of the noble, and the son of the noble, the chosen by Allah, is not a thief. So their words can be interpreted in one or two different meanings. Number one, it is a lie. And they've lied before. They went back to their father weeping at night. And they said, the wolf ate my bro our brother. So they lied before. And many of the Mufassirin or the interpreters said that was a second lie for them. They're just trying to, what are they trying to do? To distance themselves from that, from their half-brothers, from Yusuf and from Benjamin. And they said, well, that, that part of our family is known to be that way. See what they're trying to do. But not us. Right? So they're distancing themselves and they're accusing Yusuf falsely of something that he has not done. That he's a thief. The other thing that it's possibility, and that is actually a weaker narration, that Yusuf alayhi salam wanted to teach his maternal grandfather a lesson and who was an idol worshiper. So Yusuf, while he was very little, he took and the, the idol of his grandfather and hid it. And they thought that that was stealing the idol, the object of worship of his maternal grandfather, which is really a weak narration. The major, but it is there in the books of Tafsir. And there are other explanations. But the majority say that it was just another lie. They were just trying to distance themselves from Yusuf and from Benjamin and to put them in the most evil possible picture. And Yusuf alayhi salam is hearing that himself while he's standing before them. And any person would be boiled, will boil with anger. It's a false accusation. And he's standing right there. How many of us can stand a position like that without at least getting red? You know, without being, the face would get red. Who can do that? Even if they said nothing. But you see the forbearance of, because if his face changed, they would immediately suspect something. فَأَسَرَّهَ يُوسُفُ فِي نَفْسِهِ it was completely hidden. Yusuf completely did not react at all to what they said, except deep down in his heart. The other thing that they said that that was wrong is that they said, Akhun lahu, that Yusuf is a brother of Benjamin. Look, look, every single word gives you an emotion, gives you a state of mind for the person who's speaking. They said, if he stole, one of his brothers stole, before him, not our brother. I mean, Yusuf is their brother. But they said the brother, his brother stole. So they're even distancing themselves as much as possible, even using the words. He said, well, this, per this one stole, and his brother, like he is not related to them, his brother also stole before him. So imagine Yusuf standing here. He wants good for them. He wants to invite them back. He wants to really get them back to the way of Allah. He's given them provisions. He's being nice to them. Ana khairul munzilin. I'm the best host for you. And here's how they're speaking about Yusuf. And this is how they're treating Yusuf and his brother. How does he respond to that? This is the karam. This is no nobility of, of Yusuf alayhi salam. فَأَسَرَّهَا يُوسُفُ فِي نَفْسِهِ وَلَمْ يُبْدِهَا لَهُمْ So Yusuf, keep that for himself and reveal not to them. But he said to himself, قَالَ أَنْتُمْ شَرٌ مَكَانًا You are in worst case. You, you know, even if you, for the sake of argument, believe that Yusuf, you know, took or hid the idol of his grandfather, whatever it is, you are committing worse sins by lying against Yusuf, by lying against his brother, by accusing his brother, by not even defending your own brother. So what that this thing came out of his sack? 
how easy it is to plant it there. And that's exactly what happened. It was planted. It was planted, but they would not defend their brother, not with one word. They didn't say, you know, we wouldn't, you know, we're, we're surprised. We never, he never done anything wrong. Instead of that, they're trying to even affirm, confirm the accusation. Says, yeah, that makes sense. His brother was a thief too. See what they're saying? Instead of defending their brother, they said, no, it really makes sense that he stole something. Because his brother was also a thief. So Yusuf kept it and kept his cool. SubhanAllah. The generosity. Do you like Yusuf or not? Allah just asks, you read this. Are you not falling in love again with Yusuf alayhi salam? Look at this akhlaq, at this manner, at this control. Who can do that? Who can do that? Who can keep their cool in the face of false accusation? Wallahi, it, is, it takes a lot. Only prophets can do that and they, they are our role models. This is what we need to learn, is how to control ourselves in the face of things like that. قَالَ أَنْتُمْ شَرٌ مَكَانَ You are indeed in a worse position than what you're describing. Even, even if what you're describing is right, but you're, you're, making, you're, doing, you're, you're making a worse mistake than that. قَالَ أَنْتُمْ شَرٌ مَكَانَ وَاللَّهُ أَعْلَمُ بِمَا تَصِفُونَ But Allah knows best of what you have described. Allah knows what you described is false and wrong. And they, but then now they, they, you know, and that is part of the ihsan of Yusuf. I want to mention that. You know, Yusuf is mentioned five times in this verse as a muhsin. In the Surah Yusuf, the, the, nobody is mentioned five times in the Quran as muhsini, except Yusuf alayhi salam. Part of ihsan of Yusuf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Al-Umran, وَالْكَاظِمِينَ الْغَيْضِ وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ To hold your anger, to control your emotions is part of ihsan. This is not an easy thing. Allah loves those who can do that. Allah loves the muhsineen. So here's Yusuf proving his ihsan once more. And we will reflect a little bit more on that later on, inshallah. But they came back to the realization that they have given a very strong oath to their father that they will bring their brother back. And now his brother is being what? Arrested based on their recommendation. They said, you take whomever you find that in their sack. And it was found in their brother's sack. And now his brother is being taken to be the slave of Aziz Musr. said, Ya Yuhal Aziz, Inna lahu adhan shaykhan kabiran. Indeed, he has an older father, meaning his father is really attached, and his father will really grieve for his absence. فَخُذْ أَحَدَنَا مَكَانَ Take one of us, choose anyone you want, as a slave, instead of taking him. Because they, they wanted to, they cannot do this twice to their father. إِنَّا نَرَاكَ مِنَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Indeed, we see that you are of al-muhsinin. And they see, you know, they, they notice that, they realize that, they know the way he's dealing with them. It's all fair. Even when it came to the punishment, he made them choose it. Even when it came to how that person should be punished, he made them, they said, you decide, what do you want to do with that person? They chose the punishment. But then he answered the back, said, Ma'ad Allah, Allah forbids. And نَأْخُذَ إِلَّا we will not take except, he didn't say the thief. So the politeness, he would never accuse his brother of theft directly. At all. Not even to, to cover the plot. He said, مَعَاذَ اللَّهِ أَن نَأْخُذَ إِلَّا مَا وَجَدْنَا مَتَاعَنَا عِنْدَ The translation, we would not take anyone but him with whom we found our property. Does that mean that he's a thief? It doesn't mean he's a thief. We just found our property with him. We put it there, actually. But he would not even say a bad word about his brother. See the nobility of Yusuf. Not even to, to make the plot smoother. He would have easily said, no, no, we will take only the thief. Only the thief we will take as a slave. He said, no. We will take the ones that we found our property with. If we did it otherwise, we would be zalimun. We would be wrongdoers. Inna idan la zalimun. So they tried and tried and tried. And we know that also from using the, the uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's perfect and, and miraculous really choice of words. Just to, in four words it gives you another complete picture of exactly what happened. And many scholars that actually interpret the Quran and reflect on 
on the, the, the miraculous quality of just the verbalizations, the articulation of the verses. They said this is one of the highest, really. I mean, Quran is all miraculous, but like in every beautiful piece, there are high notes and there are lower notes. And these, Surah Yusuf is one of the highest. Really, the, the language is, is just absolutely miraculous. And many scholars say that pay attention whenever Allah starts, إِنَّا أَنزَلْنَاهُ قُرْآنًا عَرَبِيًّا Allah just say the Qur'an is Arabi or makes a, a, a connection with the language and the Qur'an that just listen because you're about to hear some of the most beautiful Arabic that you'll ever hear. So the verse that Allah said, فَلَمَّا اسْتَيْأَسُوا مِنْهُ خَلَصُوا نَجِيَّا In four words, it really you cannot describe it. He said that means they tried and tried and tried and they begged and they pleaded and they made a case and they finally got to the point that they knew there was no way was, was Yus, there was Aziz. At this point, they don't know that he's Yusuf. فَلَمَّا اسْتَيْأَسُوا If they reach the absolute point, there will be no hope that they're taking their brother with them. خَلَصُوا They went in private. Najiya, And they had a private conversation away from other people. That's, that's really what those four words mean. Is that entire, exactly everything that I just said. فَلَمَّا اسْتَيْأَسُوا مِنْهُ خَلَصُوا نَجِيَّا قَالَ كَبِيرُهُمْ Now the first sign that the lesson started to work with them, that they're starting getting, getting the message. قَالَ كَبِيرُهُمْ their, their oldest. The oldest brother said, قَالَ كَبِيرُهُمْ أَلَمْ تَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ أَبَاكُمْ قَدْ أَخَذَ عَلَيْكُمْ مَوْثِقًا مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَمِنْ قَبْلُ مَا فَرَّطْتُمْ فِي يوسف. Do you know not, you know not that your father did take an oath from you in Allah's name? And before you did fail, before you did fail in your duty with Yusuf, don't you realize that you have taken an oath with your father? And you have failed your father before with Yusuf alayhi salam? And then he said, فَلَنْ أَبْرَحَ الْأَرْضِ I will not leave this land حَتَّى يَأْذَنَ لِي أَبِي Until my father gives me permission to come back. أَوْ يَحْكُمَ اللَّهُ لِي Or Allah would decide my case by releasing my brother Benjamin. وَهُوَ خَيْرُ الْحَاكِمِينَ And Allah is the best of judges. So first thing, first person that realized that they are, they are, they are in a trouble because of their behavior. They are in trouble because of what they have done is their eldest brother. So he said first, he reminded them with their oath. What did they do? There is that same phrase in, the, in this verse when they gave two promises. وَإِنَّا لَهُ لَحَافِظُونَ وَإِنَّا لَهُ لَحَافِظُونَ The first time it is in verse 12, in ayah 12. And the second time is in ayah 63. The exact same words. The first promise was for Yusuf, that we will protect Yusuf. The second promise, we will protect Benjamin. The first promise they broke. And the second promise, they broke. And the first time they did it purposely, intentionally, and they plotted to break that promise. They gave a false promise to their father. The second time, Allah reminded them that that first promise was really important. But now you realize, now they, you know, they're trying and pleading, you know, they had all of this argument with Aziz, and please don't let us break our promise to our father. Do you not remember the first promise that you made your father? Do you, now you realize the importance of a promise. This is the first lesson that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught them. That when you give a ahd, inna al-ahda kana mas'ula, that the promise is something that you will be asked upon before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Awfu bil-uqood, ya ayuha al-lazina amanu, awfu bil-uqood. You should, you should fulfill your oath. You should give you, when you give a promise, it is a sacred promise before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now they realize. See how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings people back. By let them first realize the enormity of what they have done. So the same words that came out of their mouth twice, only the second time they felt that it was a major thing, that don't, please don't let us break our promise with our father. Well, now you don't have a choice, and you actually, when you don't have a choice, you, you are not responsible for that promise as much as the first promise. Well, you broke it when you have complete choice. They broke their promise with their father when they were in complete control 
of what they wanted to do with their brother Yusuf alayhi salam. So now he felt the shame with his father and he decided that he will not go back to his father and he will not be able to face his father under these circumstances. So then he continued to say, this is the elder brother speaking. And you can see how much left in their heart against Yusuf or against his bro- the, the Benjamin, uh, his brother. He said, ارجعوا إلى أبيكم Go back to your father. فقولوا يا أبانا And say, our father, إن ابنك سرق That your son has stolen. And say, our brother has stolen. Your son. They kept, you know, they're trying to keep the emotional distance. And you know, many people reflect on that and they said, you know, they don't want to bring this closer because that will make them even more, feel more guilty of what they have done to that brother, what they continue to do. But they immediately said that your son has stolen. So they are confirming what happened. And we cannot give a testimony. We will testify not except according to what we know. We saw that in front of our eyes that this was found in his bag. But if there is something that we don't know, we don't know the unseen. We could we could not know the unseen. Meaning, and that can give us different meanings. Number one is, we could not have expected this. When we've given you the, the vow and the oath that we will protect your son, we could not have predicted that he would steal. We, did not, we could not have predicted that he will get himself in trouble where we could not help him. And we cannot... Uh, no, we cannot know the unseen. We don't know what is hidden from us. And now they want even more evidence to show their father. They said, "Was alil qariyat alati kunna fiha?" And ask the people of the city that we were have been. And they did the the exact and uh, literal translation doesn't say the people of the city. Just say ask the city. But that means the people that live in the city. Of course, you don't go to the walls and ask them. That's a figure of speech in Arabic. Ask the city, ask the people of the city, ask anyone. Because apparently this story has now become very well known and everybody knew about it in Egypt. That those Hebrew people came and they stole the uh, measure of the king and now one of them was caught. So they said, just, just ask the people of the city. Even ask the caravan that, that came back with us. Ask anyone you want. And we are indeed telling the truth. The first time, what did they say when they were bringing the story about Yusuf? You will not believe us even if we're truthful. This time we're saying, we are indeed truthful. This time we're really, Wallahi, we're telling the truth. But Yaqub alayhi salam, who knew his son. Now this is husn al-dhan. See the... The accusation, the allegation against Benjamin did not go with, with Yaqub alayhi salam. Yaqub did not believe it. He said, that could not have happened. I know my son. He said, no, there is something wrong with this picture. قَالَ بَلْ سَوَّلَتْ لَكُمْ أَنفُسُكُمْ أَمْرًا No, indeed, again. سَوَّلَتْ لَكُمْ أَنفُسُكُمْ أَمْرًا But your own selves have guided you onto something. You, have, you are planning another plot like you did with Yusuf. So patience is the most fitting. Again, sabrun jameel. The first phrase that he used the first time, the same phrase, he's using it again. Sabrun jameel. Beautiful patience. What is a sabr jameel? It is patience without complaint. It is patience where you don't show resentment towards Allah's decree. And it doesn't mean that you don't feel the sadness like we said before. It doesn't mean that you don't feel the pain of what a human being would feel. But you will not have the complaints against Allah. And you don't have the resentment against Allah's decree and the fate and the destiny that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained for you. Sabrun jameel. But this time, he added another phrase. He said, Now I hope and may Allah will bring them all back to me. Now he lost the second son. He said, I'm hoping with Allah that he'll bring both of them back. There is hope. So never lose hope with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Now the situation has gotten worse in the house of Yaqub. Now the first one gone, and now many years later the second one is gone. Yet Yaqub is increasing not in depression and desperation, he's increasing in hope. Can we do that? Do we know how to do this? As things get worse in our lives, we become more optimistic? We become more hopeful with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Is that something we know how to do as individuals, as an ummah, as a nation? As things get darker and darker and darker, we become more hopeful and even more optimistic. And we said that the break of dawn happens only after the darkest pitch of the night. The darker the night, that means it's about to be over. This is the, the, the hope, the, the akhlaq al-anbiya, the manners of these prophets. This is how they hope with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Asa Allah. Indeed, I'm hoping with Allah that Allah will bring them all back to me. Innahu huwa al-alim al-hakim. Indeed, only He is the all-knowing and the all-wise. Al-alim al-hakim. And you will see Yaqub alayhi salam, he will say that. When he started the, the whole story, he told his son, Innahu alim al-hakim. Allah indeed is alim hakim. And he insists to the end of the story, that the lesson that we should always think of Allah as the all-knowing, Allah knows what He's doing. Ali. So he's saying, Allahu alim. Innahu huwa al-alim al-hakim. Innahu huwa al-alim al-hakim. Allah is all-knowing. Allah knows what He's doing. Allah hakim. Allah is all-wise. No resentment at all. In exception. You know, exact opposite. Allah put everything where it belongs. And hikmah is for everything to put exactly the way it should be. And Allah does that. So he said, you know, sabrun jameel, I will be patient. The one in charge is Allah, and Allah knows, and Allah is all wise. This is the, the, the beautiful patience. This is sabrun jameel. That whole realization of Yaqub alayhi salam. So no matter how difficult things are, we should trust that when whatever Allah promises will happen. And Yaqub knew that the vision of Yusuf alayhi salam has not been fulfilled yet. And it will happen. And they will prostrate to Yusuf alayhi salam. And he knows that wa'dullahi haq, that the promise of Allah is all true. And remember the atmosphere of the revelation here. When was this, this, these verses revealed? In the year of sorrow. In the year of sadness, where the Muslims were in really deep, dark, pitched night. And they were feeling the pressure. They're feeling the oppression. They're feeling the sadness in their heart. And mostly the Prophet ﷺ who lost the support. This was one of the worst years in the life of the Prophet ﷺ. He said that. This was the year where he lost Khadija. This was the year where he lost Abu Talib. This was the year when he went out of Mecca, he went to At-Ta'if, and he was chased by the people of At-Ta'if. He was stoned, and he left At-Ta'if bleeding, and he could not go back to his house, because Mecca told him he cannot enter Mecca again. And Aisha told him, was the hardest day of your life, day of Uhud? He said, no, it was that day. It was the day when I was, when I was expelled out of At-Ta'if. This was the year. This was when Surah Yusuf was revealed. Allah is telling everyone that gets into a situation that don't matter, don't, don't be patient, sabrun jameel, beautiful patient. You have to trust in the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if this ummah realized that, wallahi, we would not be in a state of depression. Because the, the affairs of the Muslims are difficult. And we can get into a point of our lives, in our personal lives, where things are very difficult. Where we think that there's just there is no possible way that this can be, you know, corrected. How could this happen? But we need to learn from these prophets that the harder it gets, more hope, more trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we should have. So he would never get into the state of despair. And he will say that, continue the lessons of Yaqub. How much time? Yeah. 15 minutes? Let me just finish the words of Yaqub. وَتَوَلَّ عَنْهُمْ And then he, he, he turned away from them. He separated from them. And then he continues to reflect. 
the sadness and the sorrow. قال يا أسف على يوسف. Oh, alas, my grief for Yusuf. وبيضت عيناه من الحزن. And he lost his eyesight out of sadness and sorrow. So, with this hope that he's saying, yet his heart could not help but feel the sadness for the loss that he has encountered. His two most beloved children have disappeared. لا يوسف وأخوه أحب إلى أبينا منا. That was a fact that Yusuf and his brother are more beloved to our father. So the two most beloved ones have gone. And he was feeling the sadness and he was crying over them. And why would he say, now what did, where, who did he lose now? He lost Benjamin, right? Why would he say, Ya Asafa ala Yusuf? Why would he say, oh alas, my grief for Yusuf? It is more befitting that he would remember the one that he just lost, right? Not the one that he lost 20, 25, 35, 40 years ago, right? But really the psychology, this is very accurate story. It is what happened. It is what happens in the emotions of human beings. You know, if, if someone lost a dear one, let someone, for just this instance, they loved their, their father very much and they lost their father. Now the moment someone else loses their father and they see that, the whole emotion of losing their own father comes up again. Right? It just revives. It just like just happened. You know, the, the other person is crying, they sit down, they cry with them. They really feel the pain. All of these hidden and suppressed and, and the emotions that happen for that time, it re-emerges. You know? People sympathize with other people that went through the same process, the same grief that they went through. But for Yaqub, it wasn't somebody else, it was himself. He lost Yusuf and now he's living the same nightmare once more. He's living the very same experience by the same people that caused the loss of his son. So he immediately remembered his sorrow for Yusuf as if it just happened. As if, it, as if he just lost Yusuf and now he lost Benjamin with him. قَالَ يَا أَسَفَ عَلَى يُسَفْ He remembered immediately all of these emotions came back. وَبْيَضَّتْ عَيْنَاهُ مِنَ الْحُزْنِ He had like cataracts. His eyes became white. This is scientifically accurate. You know, that his lenses have condensed out of that, as much as he's tired and straining his eyes out of sadness and tear and being up at night and all of that. وَبْيَضَّتْ عَيْنَاهُ مِنَ الْحُزْنِ فَهُوَ كَظِيمٌ And he would internalize his sadness and his sorrow. He would not show it to other. How do we know what? From, from the two words, تَوَلَّ عَنْهُمْ he, 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 separate, he, he went aside in private. He, would, he wouldn't spell his you know, sorrow and tears in front of people. He only would do it with who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His, his, his private sadness, his private sorrow with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then فَهُوَ كَظِيمٌ When he internalizes a lot of that, when he keeps all of that inward, it eats up more at the heart. The emotions that are not really, you know, many times when someone is extremely depressed, then in a crisis, many psychologists said, don't prevent yourself from crying out. Let it out. You know, let it out. Otherwise, it will cause you problems. It will cause you trouble. And that's what, what they're saying. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said he was internalizing. He was very private. He doesn't want, he doesn't want any, you know, uh, pity uh, comments from anyone. He wants to, to keep it all to himself. But the family realized that. And they said, Yusuf? You mentioned Yusuf again? قَالُوا تَاللَّهِ تَفْتَأُ تَذْكُرُ يُوسُفْ حَتَّى تَكُونَ حَرَضًا أَوْ تَكُونَ مِنَ الْهَالِكِينَ You keep saying Yusuf, Yusuf, Yusuf. It's Yusuf gone. Forget Yusuf. It's been years. Come on. يعني خلاص. They said, haven't you even given up upon for Yusuf? تَذْكُرُ يُوسُفْ They would not leave Yusuf. حَتَّى تَكُونَ حَرَضًا Until you get yourself to... You, you will make yourself very sick mentioning Yusuf. You will kill yourself. أَوْ تَكُونَ مِنَ الْهَالِكِينَ You will perish out of sadness. You will kill yourself out of sadness by mentioning Yusuf. And then he said, I'm not complaining to you. قَالَ إِنَّمَا أَشْكُوا بَثِّي وَحُزْنِي إِلَى اللَّهِ He said, I'm not, don't, don't, you know, don't tell me anything because I'm not complaining to you. إِنَّمَا أَشْكُوا بَثِّي وَحُزْنِي إِلَى اللَّهِ 
I am only complaining my grief and my sorrow to Allah. Why is that? وَأَعْلَمُ مِنَ اللَّهِ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ I know of Allah what you know not. I know the mercy of Allah. I know the wisdom of Allah. I know Allah Qadir. I know Allah can bring Yusuf back. I know Allah is capable of changing my whole situation. وَأَعْلَمُ مِنَ اللَّهِ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ He said, don't, don't get that des- despair. I'm sad for the separation, but I would never lose hope with Allah. Ya bani yadhabu. All my children go back. Fatahassasu mi Yusuf wa akhi. And search and inquire about Yusuf and his brother. Ask about Yusuf before his brother. Even Yusuf to them is a lost cause. Well, Yusuf, where is Yusuf? Yusuf gone. They know what they did to Yusuf. There is no way Yusuf can be found. He said, no, you go ask about Yusuf and his brother. And they said, وَلَا تَيْأَسُوا مِنْ رَوْحِ اللَّهِ This is the, this is, if we want to take anything home from tonight's session, this is it, really. This is what I've been just going around and around and around to get to. وَلَا تَيْأَسُوا مِنْ رَوْحِ اللَّهِ All you who believe. لَا تَيْأَسُوا مِنْ رَوْحِ اللَّهِ And never give up hope of Allah's mercy. Wallahi, if people lose hope with the mercy of Allah, and the support of Allah, and the help of Allah, they would live, would live in the most miserable life possible. Anyone who gets in trouble, if they don't have that deep belief in Allah, and the hope with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will be in absolute misery. And no, no antidepressant can help them. Wallahi, all they will get is misery. وَلَا تَيْأَسُوا مِنْ رَوْحِ اللَّهِ And do not lose hope in Allah's mercy. إِنَّهُ لَا يَيْأَسُ مِنْ رَوْحِ اللَّهِ إِلَّا الْقَوْمُ الْكَافِرُونَ Indeed, certainly no one despairs of Allah's mercy except people who believe. The children of Ya'qub lost hope with Yusuf. Lost hope that, that Allah can, would bring Yusuf back. Said, you're just gonna get your eyes tired crying for Yusuf. And nothing will happen, but you will be killed. You will kill yourself for that. And he said, you never lose hope. You never get despair. And his heart is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The heart of Ya'qub is connected to Allah. He said, when I complain, I complain to Allah. And I know that Allah will give me the hope. And I know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, can reverse all my sorrow and all my sadness. And I know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring them both back. And he sends his children on their third trip back to Egypt. And inshallah ta'ala, when we continue our session, we will go back with them to Egypt on their third trip to to meet Al-Aziz, to meet Yusuf, that they don't even know who he is, the the governor of Egypt, the the one who has their brother. And they came to him this time in a completely different attitude. This time they came with the realization of their wrongdoing, they came after they realized what they have done to Yusuf, after they realized what they have wronged with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they came with these beautiful words from their father, La تَيْأَسُوا مِنْ رَوْحِ اللَّهِ Never despair from the mercy of Allah. Never despair from the forgiveness of Allah. Never forgiveness from all the rahmah of Allah. Never despair from all the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.